Hey, can I make an announcement? You sure can. Um, this Saturday is our back to school bash. Look at these great kids. We love our kids. I think uh, Regina and Miss Alicia and, and different ones, I don't know who all the, uh, Angela over there will probably, well, I'll say over there, I don't know, anyway. Anyway, the, 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 one, the leaders will probably take them and wine them and dine them that day. But <laughs> them and yeah, them. yeah, cool them up. And uh, anyway, that day they'll make a day of it, and uh, for our kids. And then ever, I mean, that night at six thirty here, there's going to be just a youth rally. Just invite families, invite kids. Uh, we hope we hope this place yeah. is packed out yeah. with kiddos in this in this uh, you know county and, and, and area and everything. So invite everybody. It's it's six thirty here. It's just a kids service. Everybody it's come. Everybody's service. Every yeah, it's come. an everybody yeah. service. Yeah. Bring your plugs if you don't like loud music. And <laughs> Yay. I'll have some earplugs if you want them. At the door. Are you gonna pass out earplugs? I'll pass out earplugs if you want them. And so, do everybody come six thirty this Saturday, and then Brooke's gonna stay over and preach and uh, at regular service so yeah. if you can't Brooke Hooper's going to be here Saturday she, at 6 30. Yes. she's our district yeah. youth director amen. yes yes amen so come out and support her she's brand new her, for those of you that don't know most of you remember Captain Rex it's Captain Rex's daughter yeah. Yeah. who in all the skits and stuff was Fisher she's not Fisher anymore so anyway thank God and uh but she's also going to stay Sunday and, and minister Sunday here next Sunday. And just so regular gotta, service. Um, yes. regular service. So it's a, we'll have a special service Saturday night, 6 30. Y'all come expecting a miracle. Yeah, bring your kids. Amen. Bring your teenagers, bring your kids. Hey, We're going to have a good time and then she's going to stay Sunday morning and do next Sunday yes. as well. Amen. Amen. Again, it's good to have Steve at home. Hey, man, praise God. You got a song you don't sing? Yes, sir. I'm not really a performer, but I'm. I'm going to worship, man. I'm going to show y'all. Uh, I've been going seven years, and, and uh, the Bible says, Where can I go from the presence of the Lord? Uh -huh. I'm going to make my bed in hell. There you are. You know, that's, I found Amen. that to be true because he was there. So I want to show y'all how we worship in prison, right? We didn't have practice a lot of times. Sometimes we didn't have sheet music. Uh, so we had to just worship. And so I, I want y'all to sing with me. I'm not really a performer. So just worship with me. This is just an easy song everybody can catch on to.
Say you are here, right now. Your victory is breaking out, right here, right now. You're breaking chains, they hold me down. You are here, right now. Your victory is breaking out. Your victory is breaking out right here, right now. Your breaking chains they hold me down right here, right now. Your victory is breaking out right here, right now. Oh Jesus, your breaking chains they hold me down. And Jesus, you're worthy of honor and glory. Jesus, you're
Until we order him one, can he take that one right there? I reckon he can take this Bible. You reckon? Honestly, I don't know who Tell it Tell him we'll to. order him a good one. I mean, that's a good one. But I'm saying a study Bible, whatever it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget that. Amen. So, whose Bible that is, I just gave you a Thank you, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? Okay, all right. Okay, we can give him a new one. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. And we give you a love, y'all. And I pray comfort in your, in your spirit. Yeah. Amen. They, they lost the, one of the family pets this past week. How I many you know that's a family member? Come on. Yeah. 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 Nancy did too. Yes. Who? Nancy. Oh, I did not know that. So we just pray grace and comfort in that. Amen. I'll tell you what, if, if, if one of y'all die, I'll be sad. But when my dog goes, man, I'm serious. Y'all laughing with me. I'm not kidding. Amen. God is, God is good. Even in the midst of it. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, <laughs> Brother, I have a petition. These two, actually, Eli is out in the ocean somewhere. He went on a cruise this weekend. Eli's out in the ocean somewhere yes. on a cruise. God bless you. He's <laughs> part of his graduation from, from college. He paid for it himself. He paid himself a trip. He paid himself a graduation present. Nobody else was. Yeah. So he gave it to his <laughs> family. <family's family's family's laughs> <family's family's family's laughs> <family's laughs> <family's laughs> Thank you, Brother. 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 Thank you, Oh, Mama's having a problem with this. Mama's having an issue with this. <laughs> Stretch your hands towards Mama. Comfort her, Lord, Lord, in the name of the not being facetious, but also mean. In the name of Jesus. And bless that boy in Jesus' name. That son of theirs, listen, is a man of God. He may not know yet. Where he's supposed to, but how he's supposed to win. But I'm gonna tell you something. He's got a he's got a right spirit in him. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise then, God. We're going out of town today to go take care of some stuff. Okay. So we continue to pray for her family, yes. her mom. Yes. Her mom's having some yes. pretty significant issues, and they had to make some hard make some hard decisions. Yes. But I thank you, Lord, for guidance, yes. and I thank you, Lord, for your provision, yes. and I thank you for your healing. In yeah. restoration in every relationship, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. What's in a name? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Dennis. Oh, Dennis. Dennis is not here, so I'll speak live and healing into Dennis. And I'll check, I'll check on him after church. Uh, as far as I know, he's okay. But will we just speak healing and life in Jesus? Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise God. And I guarantee you, if somebody asks him to pray for you, he will be able to church before God. So, Lord, right we will go in Jesus right now in Jesus' name. Amen. As far as I know, he's good and okay. I don't think you're going to wrong, but I'll speak life over him. Amen. 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 So what's in the name? 
Somebody busted up my meeting last Sunday, so. <laughs> and that's fabulous. Which is just okay with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I may or may not try to pick up where we left off because I believe God's got something for us in this. I want to tell you something. There's coming a day, and the Word of God says, when, and I know I'm jumping all over the place as far as names go, I've been trying to do it in a, in a certain fashion, but there's coming a day when the Word of God tells us that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. That's from every tongue, Amen. that's from every nation. Yes. Listen, yes. whether whether no matter what, one of these days, yeah. Adolf Hitler, yeah. if it out if it hadn't already happened, yeah. <laughs> on the other side of the veil, we'll have to confess with his mouth that uh -huh. Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I tell you what, I would rather make that confession on this side of the dirt. Come on now. I mean, the Bible says power of death and life is in the tongue, and, and that's part of it. So, man, no matter what your situation is, come on, man, no matter what your circumstance is, as you get in agreement with heaven, somebody help me this morning. When you get into agreement with heaven, and when you invoke that power of agreement, which the Word of God says we have, and when you invoke the name above all names, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Man, you've got the universe as a It has to line up. Yeah. Come on now. It has to line up with his word. Yes. Right. Amen. 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 Yep. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. And there's yeah. no other name so given whereby humans, whereby men can be saved. Yes, that's right. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you were born in this snapshot of history? Yeah. Because you can name the name of Jesus yeah. today, and you ain't got to worry about somebody taking your head. That's right. Amen. You ain't got to worry about somebody putting you in jail. You can name the name of Jesus freely. Yes. Come on, in our community. Woo! Because quite frankly, I don't know about you, but some of us, if we'd have been in that first century when they're cutting Christians' heads off and uh -huh. burning them at the stake, crucifying them, we'd glad that would be their condition. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So everything is wrapped up in that problem. I'm going to reach the Bible to you. Isaiah 9 2. I'm going to do my best not to rehash what I've already said with no promises. Amen. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shine. Did y'all hear what I just read? Yes. Amen. Come on, how many of you know that's, that's not just talking about some group of people thousands of years ago? It's not just talking about what Jesus said uh, 2,000 years ago. How many of you know that scripture and it's saying today? Come on, y'all. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. I know none of y'all ever walk in any darkness. I have. And the people that walk in great darkness, listen, when you encounter, please hear me, when you encounter the true light of the gospel, yes. when you encounter the true God, when Amen. you encounter the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ, and when that light begins to dawn on you, listen, you can never be the same. Right. When you encounter him, now listen, you can run. I don't know if y'all ever run. You can run. You can. It's very hard. If you're the one that be in your provision or your problem, you're here. Because, come on now. Because yes. you'll be most miserable once you've tasted and you ever walk away. That's it. Yes. But the good news is. You may have walked in darkness. You may not have ever known anything but darkness. You, you might have even tried to call that darkness light in a religious way. Yeah. But when Jesus begins to shine on you, come on, 
You'll yeah. see that great light. See how I might not get out of this verse this morning. Uh -huh. I'm going to skip verse 3 and go to verse 4. Go to Isaiah 9 4. For you have broken mm -hmm. yes. the yoke of his burden. I'll talk about the name of Jesus, y'all. You have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder. The rod of That's his right. oppressor, That's right. as in the day of Midian. Yes, Lord. Now we can breeze past that and go, just get to the next verse. What the heck is she talking about here? Yeah. Yeah. Let, me, let me read one more verse and then we're going to go back to Midian. Somebody remind me in case I start ranting. Midian, Midian. He broke the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus goes, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek. I'm talking about the real Jesus. Not the little one, not some Jesus that religion is talking about, not some Jesus that, I'm talking about the real Jesus. He goes, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and I'm lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. Amen. And it says he's going to crush it. As he did in the days of Midian. So I wondered as I began to read that for the umpteenth time. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 Midian, Midian, Midian. Wow, what's he talking about? There was a time in Israel's history, bear with me now. How many of you know it may have happened thousands of years ago, but the Lord uh, let it all happen and worked it all out so it could be a pattern for us. Amen. Well, we don't have to fall in the same oppression that our forefathers Amen. did or the same oppression that the Jewish people did, the nation of Israel back in the day did. Amen? Yeah. It's for an example for us not to follow. But me, and you may or may not know, was kind of a half-breed son that was actually a descendant of Abraham. See, the Midianites have a little bit of truth mingled in with who they are. We like to have a little Jesus mingled in with stuff, but not too much. And there were times when the Israelis tried to cohabitate and, and interact with them in a peaceful way. And how many of you know that's never going to work? Yeah. And as it turns out, the Midianites actually made war against the Jewish nation and whipped them took them over and beat them down. And when they'd even try to grow a crop, man, the Midianites would come in and steal the crop and beat the fields down and things like that. But there was still a prophet in the land. Yep, there you go. Come on now. See, sometimes, oh, golly, this, this, don't start meddling, Prince John. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go for it. I'm just kidding. Do it. <laughs> See, the thing is, man, is, is sometimes the Lord, he doesn't put evil on you. He doesn't put things on you. Come on, whether you like it or not, right. it's the that seed right. you sown. And if you yeah. sow whatever you, whatever you plant, most likely going to come up. 
And then when it comes up, we go, oh, Lord, I need crop failure. <laughs> Come on. Anybody know many of them pray for crop failure? When you know good and well that you sow no seed? And, yeah, come on. And how many of you know many times he's merciful and allows some crop failure, but sometimes his mercy, come on, how many in the book of Habakkuk? And wrath, remember mercy, but and wrath is the absence of God's blessing. Come on. And sometimes we have to get to that place because it's the only place we're ever going to really cry out to God. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only place he's ever really going to get our attention. Yeah. Yeah. Fix my kids, Lord. Fix my marriage. Fix my stuff. Oh, thank you. Give me a job. Oh, thank you. And then we did. Yeah. <coughs> there was a prophet in the land. I pray that in your life, I pray that in your family's life, there rises up a prophetic word. Yes. So yes. Now, we just, I'm, not, I'm not going back to the 80s, and I'm not going to talk about some of the same but, but we need a prophetic word sometimes. Yes. Come on, God. Uh -huh. Come on. Sometimes you need, sometimes your spirit will know. Mm -mm -mm. Your spirit will know. Your heart will know. But ain't nobody in agreement with you. That's right. You know, and, and you look, you go, well, look what I've been in agreement with up till now, and I feel bad, I feel guilty, so now I'm going to run to God. Well, yeah, why not? Absolutely, absolutely. And there was a fellow named Gideon. I didn't intend on preaching about Gideon completely today, but I'm just going to try to give you a, couple, a little bit of a tease with Gideon. And Gideon was one that apparently, until he encountered the Lord, was a little bit, I'm going to say shy because I don't want to call him a coward. But he had actually hiding from the enemy. When the word of God came to him. And the prophet showed she did. Thank you, Father. I mean, that prophet showed up to that boy and did not condemn him because of his actions. Did not condemn him because of where he had gotten himself. Yeah. Did not run him down or condemn him yes. because he was hiding from the enemy. Yeah. But the word of God looked at that boy and said, get up. You mighty man of yes. power. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Come yes. on. Amen. Sometimes somebody's got to come. Sometimes the word of God's got to come on to you. Yes. And may, maybe nobody else calls you that, but God calls you a mighty man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe nobody else will be in agreement with you, honey, but God is calling you a mighty woman of God. Yes. Come on. Yeah. God yeah. is calling you, sir, a mighty man of God. Yes. And here's the rub. Here's the thing. When the prophetic word of God that truly is a prophetic word of God comes into agreement with what you already know in your spirit, it ignites something in the supernatural yes, realm. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So from that point onward, Gideon was never a coward. Come on, y'all. Gideon was not a coward from that point onward. That word of God refashioned him inside and out. And he indeed suddenly, instantly was what God already knew he was called to go. be. Amen. Uh -huh. There you go. So, back to Isaiah. Check it out. He's going the same way that it happened with the Midianites. It's going to happen in you. Why? Because the people that sat in darkness saw a great light. Now, when you read that verse, you go, as it was in the days of millions, you go, oh, that's what he's talking about. You may have been walking in darkness. Come on, y'all. You may have been hiding in the laundry. You may have had a call of God on your life and you've run from it for maybe all your life. God is speaking to you today. Rise up. Come on. I'm talking about the Lord of hosts. I'm talking about the King of Kings. I'm talking about here the Prince of Peace. Let's read on. 
In Isaiah 6, we read all this last week in front of us. A child is born, a son is given, and the government's going to be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful. I want to preach that so bad again. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace goes in the midst of all that mess 2,000 years ago. He says, come unto me. Oh, you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you Sabbath. I will give you what, what was supposed to happen in the Sabbath. You know, oh, you know man, I can't help myself. Back in Jesus' day, they had, made, they had turned the Sabbath into such a weird thing, and it still <laughs> is in a lot of circles. I don't even know Jesus is fulfilling the everlasting Sabbath right now at the right hand of God the Father. Come on, y'all. Man, that didn't go too well. But anyway, I'm just saying, they had turned it into something that the Lord never intended. As a matter of fact, when they got after Jesus, going. You do stuff on the Sabbath. You ain't supposed to be busy. Shut up. Adam Breach. Jesus goes, look, man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. Right. But the Sabbath was made for man. Yes. That supernatural Sabbath that the Lord is calling you into is a Sabbath of peace. Amen. Yes. Right. Oh, there may be war going on. There may be chaos going on around you sometimes. There may be stuff happening, but he is the Prince of Peace. Yes. That's one of his names. Amen, you know? amen. He's the Prince of Peace. Yes. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. Yes. So therefore, man, if you all stressed out, I know I'm not talking to anybody today. <laughs> if you all, if you all look it up, and, 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 well, that's not the right way to say that, but anyway, you can, you can take that two or three different ways, and if you need to clean that, excuse it now, please. But here's the thing. You may be all messed up, torn up, tied up, knotted up. I hope you will allow the Prince of Peace to maneuver himself in your atmosphere and in your life. Because what he does, it, listen, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything's going to just change overnight around you. Your circumstances right. may not change that much. Oh, eventually they will. Right. You start putting good seed in behind it. And even in the midst of turmoil and in the midst of chaos, you can know my rest does not depend upon only one other person's actions, and that was the action that Jesus took at the cross. Yeah. I don't know what they might be doing in Austin today. I don't know what they might be doing in D.C. today. I don't know what might be going on here, there, and everywhere else, but I am going to stand in the peace that the Son of God has given us yes. free. Yes, amen. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. And I'm going to get in agreement with heaven. Over my family. Yes. Somebody say yes. amen. Yes. Amen. I'm going to be in agreement with heaven over the people I love. I'm going to be in agreement with heaven over the people that I don't love. Come on. Yes. Pray for your enemies. Yes. Bless them that yes. curse you. Yes. Pray for them that despitefully use you. And in doing so, come on, what does the word of God say? You'll be heaping great coals of fire on their head. And I know some of the old preachers used to be going, it's going to put fire on their head. It's going to burn. No, that's not what they did at all. Oh, we're going to get vengeance when I pray for them. It's what goes with fire on their head. Oh, please don't ever. If you think like that, I'm going to ask you a favor. Don't ever pray for me, please. <laughs> I don't want none of that. But back in the old school, Pentecostalism and stuff, you know, oh, yeah. But can I tell you what that really means? Amen. The most precious commodity, especially back then, was fire. Let me tell you, they didn't have a big lighter. How I many got a lighter in the party? Oh, no, but you didn't kiss me with the church. I understand. I get it, but, but yeah. But, uh, you know, they didn't, have a, they didn't have a big lighter. They didn't have a box of matches. They didn't have a stove to go turn on and inch the fire up. It was an ordeal Amen. to get a fire going. 
How many of you gentlemen were ever in Boy Scouts? I was for a little while, they kicked me out. That's how they did, and that was fine, I needed to be. But, and how many of you then, let me ask you this, how many of you have ever tried to make a fire without matches or a lighter or anything, tried to make a fire the old anyway? How many of you were ever successful at it? A lot. Of course you don't. A magnifying glass, nothing. It can be done, but it's not easy. So when they would get a fire going, that was a precious thing because uh, you got you didn't go eat nothing cooked unless you put fire on it. I'm gonna tell you something. You start praying for the fire of God, that's a good thing, and, and do it. But let me just tell you, the same fire that will cook your steaks can burn your house down. That's right. Amen. Be careful. So the fire was a precious thing. And when they get a fire going, it was somebody's job to keep that fire going. You didn't want it to go out. If it rained, if it comes a snowstorm, whatever, you better keep the fire going. Yeah. And others would come to get some coals. You gotta hear what I'm saying. Yeah. So when he says, uh, bless them that curse you, pray for them that despite will use you. And, and then later when he says, and in doing so, it's like he becomes a part of it. In other words, it's turning that in shit, you know. Yeah. It's turning that enemy yes. into a friend. Hallelujah. Yes. It's turning that one that was against you and that you were against. And when you begin to sincerely and truly pray for that person, if you're a believer, man, it's going to soften your heart to that issue that you have with them or soften your heart to that person. And that that was an enemy will now become a brother or a friend or a sister. And in doing so, you're heaping great coals of fire on their head because they will carry it on their head. Yeah. So you're getting like it. When we went to Haiti, those people had a big old thing on their legs. They'd have a thing on their head, be 15 feet oh, tall. Yeah. They'd be walking around like this, yeah. not dropping it. I'm going, how are they doing that? So, but that's kind of what, or actually exactly what the Lord was talking about. You're giving them something that's going to reproduce life yeah. for them. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. I know ain't none of y'all ever had no enemies. I ain't gonna let none of y'all got no enemies up in this place, but man, when you sincerely and genuinely begin to pray, you're giving them life. Talking about the Prince of Peace this morning. I'm talking to you about transformation. talking about salvation being the supernatural work of Christ. Not just the religious emotion that you felt. And not just the set of words that somebody had you repeat. Yeah. But I'm talking about when it gets deep down in yes. your heart yes. and you begin to seek the face of God. And it begins to happen. Let me tell you something, y'all. That's a process. Yes, it is. Is it instantaneous? Absolutely. Is it also a process? You yeah. bet it is. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I pray, Lord, let me be more. I, I know it may not it may not line up with your theology, but just get over it. I pray, Lord, I'll be more safe tomorrow Jesus. than I am today. Amen. I pray that I'm more safe today than I was yesterday. Come on. I pray that, Lord, I love you more tomorrow than I do today. Yes. And I pray that I love it more today than I did yesterday. Come on. Yes. That simple thing right there, just you can live by that. Yeah. You'll go far. Yes. Hallelujah. So when he goes, it's going to be like it was for the Midianites. It means that there needs to be a word of God ignited in your, I'm talking to somebody this morning because I can't get past this. There wow. needs to be a word of God ignited in your heart that you can get in the room with. And then, many times, yes, indeed, it does come from another human's voice, but you don't need another human's voice to get in agreement with the word of God. Come on. You don't need another human's voice, but it helps. It helps. Come on, y'all. It helps if we bear each other's burden. Come on. It helps if you go, man, I'm in, in, okay, I'm going to get in agreement with that. Amen. Some people have told me some crazy stuff before that I just couldn't get in agreement with. <laughs> but most of the time I'm going, oh, that's what's in your heart. Okay. 
will agree with you on that. And when that power collides and begins to interact, especially and only if it's the will of God, now you can get in agreement all day long with something that ain't the will of God for you. You're just going to be another miserable human being. That's right. But when you walk it out, somebody gets in agreement with you for it. That reproduces power. Hallelujah. If the enemy's trying to con if the enemy's trying to condemn you with past, if maybe even another human being is trying to condemn you with past, and guess what? They will. They will, yeah. And that's okay. No, 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 no. You just get in alignment with his word Amen. right now. Amen? Amen. Yes. And Midian was crushed. Matthew 4 says the people that sat in darkness saw that great light. And the bed was set in the region of the shadow of death. Light is sprung up. And then verse 17 goes, from that time, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven yeah. is at hand. I know some of you have had some old school preachers yell, repent, you before probably. <laughs> and I know that many times they may have meant well, but it had a negative effect based on the connotation that they infer with the very word repent. So let's explore that word for about the next five to seven minutes. See if I can do that. How many of you have faith in me? You better or I'll go all day. See, I can get in agreement with that five to seven minute thing. I can feel it brewing. Some of y'all go to pray a little harder. You can do it. Repent! <laughs> Y'all, how many of you heard me teach this a hundred times? Y'all know you've heard it. Repent! In the old school way, you better repent, boy. You better straighten up and fly right. You better yes. Yes. use the word like a whip. Yeah. To repent, to read anything means what? To do something again. The pent needs to get up. The pent, the, what's the very top room on the skyscraper called? The penthouse. The penthouse. What's the five-fold ministry? What does the word pent to it mean? The first five books of the Bible. So to repent means to get back to the highest place, come on, y'all, that God has ever called you. Get back up where you belong. That's why Jesus was going. He's looking at the crowd that is going, no, 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 no. God got something way better for you. Come on. So repent. Let's get back there to the highest place that we should have always been. Yeah. So repent. Why? Because you don't go to heaven when you die. You don't know you don't have to go to heaven when you die. When you die. No, 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 no. For the kingdom of heaven is what? At hand. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus is going, it's all over. It's everywhere. Repent. Get back up to that place to where you can see it. Yes. Hallelujah. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right now. It's all over. It's here. Make a difference in the world that you are inhabiting. Make a difference in the snapshot of culture that you've been born into. Take that light through the darkness. And every step you take when the light of Jesus is in there, come on, y'all. It shed light on what used to be dark. Amen. In my walk, I know that sometimes I'm stepping in a place and I'm like, Lord, I don't want to step there. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 yeah. I'm like, you know, Lord, I've been there and I kind of didn't want you to know I'm there. there. You know, none of y'all yeah. are yeah. like that, right? That's right. Yeah. Step there. So I can bring light to what used to be dark. Wow. And it's never what I thought. Yeah. I'm talking today about the Prince of 
peace. Amen. I'm talking about the God of peace. Yes. I'm talking about the one whose name is Jesus. Later on, as I got to you last week, where it says, if, if, if you can go here, go here, all this is going to be bad, this is going to be worse, this is going to be even worse, this is going to be hell on earth, but my hand is still outstretched. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm leaving you now. Really, because I'm going into something I didn't give you, but that's all right. Mark chapter 12, Jesus goes, didn't you read the scripture where it says the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes, which is referring to the book of Psalms, the, the book of Psalms uh, 118, 22. It says the stone which the builders refused is becoming the head of stone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We used to sing the song back in the 80s, I lay in Zion, a sure foundation of stone. Hallelujah. And that cornerstone, listen, Jesus has become the cornerstone. That's why the Lord says, I lay in Zion, a sure foundation. Some of us have tried to stand on stuff that was never meant for us to stand on. Amen. Listen, if you're trying to stand on your ability to get wealth, good luck. It's not going to hold you. Come on. If you're trying to stand on how uh, your personality is, good luck. Sooner or later, it's not going to hold you. Come on. If you're trying to stand on the religion of your forefathers, which breathe curses and hellfire and brimstone on you, Guess what? It's not going to hold up. But when you begin to stand on that sure foundation, I'm talking about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the Son of Almighty God, the only begotten Son, who laid down his life for us. And then he said, I got power to lay it down. If I got power to lay it down, I also have the power to take it back up. And every one of the disciples, he just went, Right over their heads, just like it would have been any of us. That's right. Yeah. It's so now. Huh. He is the rock of our salvation. Amen. In my mind, some of y'all, the daughter was with me, Mom. She in here? Yeah. Hey, Mom. Me, Mom, will remember this, Don. But Mary Thomas then used to sing the song of the Trinity. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the blood was rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on oh, Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Yeah. I go to the rock of So when I don't know what else to do, I know as long as I'm standing on that rock of salvation, it's going to hold me. Hallelujah. Listen, I hope this is good news for you. If you've wandered off and got in some sinking sand, listen, you can always step right back. That's right. Yes, right. Step, right. Oh, I'm good. No, I'm going to stand on him. No, don't want yeah. it. No, don't want that stuff. No. Yes. And the older you get, this is good news Jesus. for you. The more you begin to realize that you can't stand on your stuff anyway. <laughs> Some of y'all are too young to ever figure that out, but you will. And that's okay. Because you realize that there's nothing else in this world that I can stand on. Except the cornerstone, yes. the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I come to the rock. Yes, man. Thank you, Jesus. Stand this for a moment as I, as I try to bring this and bring this to you. Hallelujah. You 
you may have wandered off and stuff. You, you may be loving Jesus, but man, it's been it's been a, a, a it's been a thing. It's been rough. And you may have even made some mistakes, and that's all right. Listen, you're not gonna get any judgment out of me or out of this bunch. Not with me knowing it. No, no, no. But 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 things happen and life happens. But man, I want to encourage you today yes. to trust in the name of the Lord. The yes. name of the Lord is. Yes. He is the Prince of Peace. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 If I can just close your eyes a moment, please. We'll proceed on with this. If you go in, and this is just for my ego, okay? Because gonna, I feel like this is for somebody. But if you've been going, man, I've been I've been camped on everything but the rock, it seems, and I want to stand up on the rock. Don't worry, I'm not setting you up to bring you up here. But, but, but I want to stand on that rock. It feels like I've been sinking sand. Don't look around, nobody. Let me see hands. Let me see hands. Bye. But it says, yeah, that's good. Me. All right, put your hands down. So, let me just raise your hand. I pray in the name of Jesus in agreement with you. Right now, in agreement with you. That Jesus make himself more real to you than he ever has before. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord would begin to open up his word to you. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that he would create an insatiable hunger in you for the word of God. How many of you say, I need that hunger. I need that hunger. Lord, create in us a hunger for your word. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. A hunger for your presence. Yes. Hallelujah. And I speak this over you in the name of Jesus. Yes, amen. I go to his word. You get on the rock. Yes. Amen. Listen, God bless y'all. Don't forget next Saturday.